In this video, we will see uh, how is a gas turbine and which are the main elements that compound a gas turbine. First of all, it is necessary to remember that a gas turbine is a machine that transforms the chemical energy contained in a fuel in mechanical energy. Uh, in uh, cinetical energy, in the rotation on a shaft with some speed and some torque. A gas turbine has uh, two main assembly of elements. The first one are the main element that compound the main body of the turbine. And the second one is all the auxiliary elements that need a gas turbine to work. The main three elements that compound the main body of the turbine are the compressor, the combustion chamber, and the expansion turbine. In the compressor, we will increase the pressure of the air. Uh, we receive the air uh, at ambient temperature and ambient uh, pressure, and we compress this air. Uh, that means that in the outlet of the compressor, we have air uh, with uh, more pressure and more temperature than we have in the inlet. Normally, it's an axial compressor, and and side of the compressor, we increase step by step the pressure. Normally, uh, no more than one bar in every step till finally reach the pressure that we want. This pressure normally is compressed between 8 bar or 30 bar. 8 bar for the more samples uh, gas turbines and 30 uh, for the more complex gas turbines. Second element is the combustion chamber. Uh, depending on the type of uh, gas turbine, we have a different type of turbines. One of them are called annular gas turbine. In, uh, in this annular ga gas turbine, the uh, combustion chamber is a unit, a complete uh, unit, and all the burners that compose the gas turbine, the, the combustion chamber, are orientated to this uh, uh, unique chamber that we have. Uh, in the second type is, uh, is the can annular. We have uh, different cans and in every one of these uh, can uh, has a, is installed a combustion chamber, a complete uh, combustion chamber. Then uh, every one of these can uh, the combustion uh, occur and then is there inside of the, uh, of the can uh, where the um, uh, energy contained in the fuel is liberated. The third element is the expansion turbine. Remember that in the compressor we increase the pressure, in the combustion chamber we increase the temperature of the air and uh, um, now we have uh, in the outlet of the combustion chamber we have the air that is heated and is pressurized. Then uh, in the expansion turbine we lose this pressure and the most normal temperature is around 1200, 1300 or even 1400. The pressure in the inlet could be, as we have said before, uh, between uh, 8 bar till 30 bar. The most normal situation is uh, something around 10, 12, 15. And in the expansion turbine, uh, we will transform the potential energy that uh, are contained in this air, heated and pressurized, uh, and we transform this potential energy into cinetical energy. This transformation is made in two steps. First, it's necessary to accelerate the, the air uh, changing the pressure by speed and uh, second is necessary to translate the cinetical energy of the air to the cinetical energy in the blades. Then expansion turbine is the uh, third main element of the uh, main body of the gas turbine. The outlet of the uh, expansion turbine is a uh, flue gas. Uh, this flue gas has uh, no pressure or very near of the ambient pressure. 
but the temperature is very high, normally around 500, 600 or even more. Compressor and expansion turbine uh, are uh, running and turning and uh, the expansion turbine and the uh, compressor can turn uh, in the same shaft or not, depending on the type of uh, turbine. When we have a shaft, we need to support the shaft in at least two points. Then we need uh, some support for the shaft. And remember that the support uh, does not move and the shaft is moving. Then to absorb the friction provoked by this movement is necessary to install some element. These elements are beatings and the beatings could be rolling beatings or can be journal beatings. Then we need at least two beatings, uh, one at uh, every side of the shaft and this shaft support a uh, axial force that try to move the shaft in one direction or in another direction depending uh, if the turbine is starting, is running or of is stopping. Then to avoid this movement it is necessary to install another uh, element uh, to fix the position of the shaft. This is the uh, axial veering or truss veering. Then for the moment we have compressor, combustion chamber, expansion turbine, axial veering and radial veering. In order to reduce the friction uh, we need one system uh, that supply uh, oil uh, for two functions. First one is to lubricate and second one to refrigerate. Then we have a lube oil system uh, with uh, some pump, with a deposit, with some filters and some system to evacuate the heat uh, capturated in the building. The combustion chamber need uh, some element. First, uh, need one uh, gas station that supply the gas that we need for our turbine. Second element, sometimes we need to preheat the, uh, the gas in order to avoid that the gas goes in the turbine uh, very cold. And sometimes, depending on the technology of the turbine or even the fuel that we are using, we need a, a NOx reducer, uh, sometimes with water or with steam or uh, depending on the technology of the burner, uh, we uh, need a system to reduce the NOx emission. To regulate the amount of the uh, gas that goes in the turbine, sometimes we have a control oil to regulate uh, this valve. We can regulate this valve with air, we can regulate this valve with an uh, electric device or even with uh, oil, but the most accurate system is uh, to have a control oil and a valve actuated by oil. The next element that we need is uh, we need to extract a little part of the air that we are compressed in the compressor to send to the expansion turbine in order to cool and seal uh, the, the gas that uh, circulates by, uh, by the expansion turbine. Remember that the temperature in the expansion turbine is very high. The temperature normally in the outlet uh, of the combustion chamber is uh, um, uh, higher of uh, 1000 and this is not very comfortable for the materials. Then uh, in order to um, allow that the material can work uh, without problems uh, in this, uh, with this temperature, uh, it is necessary to cool this material and for that reason we extract a little part of the air uh, of the compressor in some uh, stage of the compressor to cool the, the metals uh, of the expansion turbine. In the starting moment and in some moment when the turbine can present uh, some problems, we need some valves to evacuate the air, the compressed air, to avoid problems in the uh, compressor. 
then we need a vent valve to evacuate all the uh, air that is compressed to the, uh, directly to the uh, outlet. Sometimes we need compressed air to uh, clean the filters or to operate some pneumatic valves. Remember that the turbine uh, provoke a very high noise near uh, of the turbine. Then uh, in order to avoid that this noise can affect uh, people, normally you install the turbine inside a one enclosure. But this enclosure, the, the turbine lose a little amount of energy, uh, thermal energy is uh, emitted by radiation. Then uh, the, this enclosure that is very well isolated to avoid that the uh, noise can go out for, uh, for this enclosure. Uh, um, what happens inside of the enclosure is heated by the radiation emitted by the uh, gas turbine. Then it is necessary to cool the, uh, um, the inner part of this enclosure. Then uh, it is necessary to introduce air and uh, extract air. Sometimes this system that ventilate and cool the enclosure uh, are composed by a ventilator that introduce air inside of the enclosure. Other, in, in other moments uh, or in, in other situations, uh, what uh, you install is a system to evacuate the uh, heated air. And uh, sometimes you have two systems, one to introduce air and other one to extract. Finally, when you stop the turbine, uh, you uh, remember that the, the uh, shaft is very hot and then uh, from the moment that you stop the turbine, the shaft uh, start to lose energy. But uh, remember that the density of the hot air is less than the cold air. Then the hot air goes in the upper part of the turbine and the hot uh, cold air goes to the lower part of the turbine. This provokes that the upper part of the shaft is uh, hotter than the uh, lower part. And uh, for that, uh, the, the expansion of the, um, uh, of the shaft is bigger in the upper part than in the lower part. This provoke that the shaft bend like this. Uh, to avoid this problem and to avoid the, the problems uh, derived by the, this bend, uh, it is necessary when you stop the turbine, turn a very, very low speed the, um, uh, the turbine. And for that, to, to do that, it is necessary to install one system. The, that system could be a rotor bearing that is uh, that, that uh, turn the, uh, the shaft of the gas turbine in a very, very uh, uh, slow uh, speed or a turning gear uh, that turn the um, turbine a more speed. And these are the main elements that compose the main body of the uh, gas turbine. The control oil control the main valve, the, 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 the valve that introduces the gas, the fuel inside of the turbine, and even control sometimes uh, the, uh, the variable vanes that uh, are installed in the inlet of the turbine to allow or to uh, avoid that the air goes in the turbine. The last element that we have in the turbine is the anti-ice system. Sometimes when the uh, ambient air is very, very cold, less than five degrees, uh, could happen that the water contained in the air can be freezing in the first step. In order to avoid this freezing, uh, there is a system that uh, translates a little part of the hot air in the outlet of the uh, compressor to the inlet uh, of the compressor. And these are the main elements that compose the main body of a gas turbine. 
in the next video we will see which are the uh, other elements the auxiliary elements uh, of the gas turbine and this uh, we will see that this auxiliary uh, element are the uh, lubricating system the uh, lube oil system uh, are the filter house or the cleaning uh, system we have here one example of a, a, a turbine is the Alstom GT13 and uh, there we can see the different element that compound the turbine for example in the number 17 we can see the inlet of the uh, uh, gas turbine in the central part we can see very well uh, the compressor and uh, we can see that the compressor is composed first by the shaft but uh, we have the uh, blades that are installed in the shaft and blades that are and veins that are installed in the case rotating blades and fixed blades in the number seven of this uh, figure we can see the uh, the combustion chamber the representation of the combustion chamber and from the point number six to the point number one uh, what we see uh, in the road is uh, the expansion turbine we have seen in this video the main element that compound the main body of the turbine the next video we will see the auxiliary element of a gas turbine